Hi, welcome to Raw Math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on sets and probability. This video is actually looking at permutations and combinations. Okay, it says find the permutation of n1. Well, permutation is defined, so if I have p of nk, that's n items taken k at a time. This is n factorial over n minus k factorial. So if I'm starting with that, this is defined as n items n minus 1. Now factorial means we're multiplying down. So n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times 2 times 1. N minus 1 is n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times 2 and 1. Well, this cancels and this and everything divides out to be 1 until we're left with just n. If we look at the permutation of n items taking n at a time, this is going to be n factorial over n minus n factorial, which is n factorial over 0 factorial, which is just n factorial. I like to think of permutation as a truncated factorial. It's telling you, like if I have the permutation of 10, 3, basically I'm saying I'm doing the first three items of the factorial. So I'm doing 10 times 9 times 8. That's how it translates to me. So Pn2 is going to be n factorial over n minus 2 factorial. And if we come back to what I did on the first problem, this is going to be n times n minus 1 times essentially n minus 2 factorial over n minus 2 factorial. The n minus 2 factorials divide out to be 1, and we're left with n times n minus 1, which if you think about it is exactly what I did here. n items taken two at a time, n times n minus 1. All right, so now let's start talking about all the different combinations that we have here. So we're going to start off with um, the combination of n items taken one at a time. Now combination of n items k at a time, this is when order doesn't matter, is n factorial over n minus k factorial k factorial. I always think of the two denominators have to add up to the numerator. So C of n1 is n factorial over n minus 1 factorial, 1 factorial. Well, 1 factorial is just 1. That doesn't matter. So if we go back to what we were doing with the permutations, this is n times n minus 1 factorial over n minus 1 factorial, which is, huh. So permutation of n taken 1 at a time is equal to the combination of n taken 1 at a time. And that's pretty much where their equality ends. When you just take one item, either way, it's just going to equal that item. Now, if you remember, above we had the permutation of n items taken n at a time was n factorial. It was as big as it got because we were doing all n items. If we had that 10 again, it would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hmm. All of them. Combination, however, of n items taken n at a time is n factorial over n minus n factorial divided by n factorial, which is n factorial over 0 factorial, which is 1, divided by n factorial. These cancel, which leaves us with 1 over 1, which is 1. This makes sense. If we look at three items, a, b, and c, I could write it as a, b, c, a, c, b, b, a, c, b, c, a, and C A B C B A. Okay, this is six different ways I could write the letters A, B, and C. Now with permutation, every one of these is different because order matters. In combination, the order doesn't matter. It's like pizza toppings. It doesn't matter what order you put the three toppings on, it's the same three toppings. So if you're doing the combination of n items taken n at a time, that means you're taking all of them, which means the outcome is one. There's only one way you can combine all of the items because order does not matter. So then this one is the one that's interesting because here's where we really start to see the difference what's going on. The combination of n items taken two at a time is going to be n factorial 
over n minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Okay, so this is n factorial, or n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial over n minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Those divide out to be 1. And we're left with n times n minus 1 all divided by 2. And that is a little bit different than what we had with the permutation because we have that extra divided by 2. So with combination, the numbers get smaller after the first one because order doesn't matter. So switching the order doesn't count as a different outcome, a different element in our set. All right. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.